Okay, so good afternoon or uh, good morning, depending where you are. Uh, my name is uh, Daphne Campigli di Giammartino, and uh, I am a PI at the Italian Institute of Technology in Genova. And uh, it is my great pleasure to present today the RNA Collaborative Seminar from the IIT, and more precisely within the context of the RNA Initiative Group, which is uh, composed by 22 laboratories in our institute, with a highly multidisciplinary approach to study RNA and non-coding RNAs. Uh, today, we will have two presenters, Damiano Mangoni and Laura Braglia. But uh, first, I just want to remind you that after each session, there will be 10 minutes for questions. So please write your questions in the Q&A chat, and I will make sure to read them after the presentation. So uh, we can start with the first presenter, um, I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dr. Damiano Mangoni, a postdoc fellow here at the IIT in the Laboratory of Non-Coding RNA and RNA Therapeutics of Professor Stefano Gustincic. Uh, Damiano got his uh, PhD from the University of Udine, working on the RNA content of microvesicles produced by different types of cancer cells. He is now finishing his postdoc here at IIT, studying the role of non-coding RNAs derived from transposable elements. Um, his work has contributed to uncover a new role for line one retrotransposons, showing that line one non-coding RNAs are required for epigenetic and post-transcriptional regulation of gene expression during development of the mouse brain and for neuronal cell function. And uh, I guess with that, I leave the stage to Damiano. Thank you, Daphne, for uh, introducing me, and uh, thanks for this uh, opportunity to present and uh, uh, share this work uh, in uh, such a prestigious stage. This talk is about a non-canonical uh, role for, uh, for uh, uh, transposable elements because I will talk to you about uh, new fu fu functions for uh, line one uh, mo mobile elements as non-coding RNAs. Uh, in the uh, that we uh, discover being being involved in the development of the of the mouse brain. Long inter interspheres nuclear elements one are a class of transposable elements uh, which account for one fifth uh, of the mouse g g uh, genome. And line one derived RNAs are uh, among uh, also among the most abundant tra tra transcripts in a cell. In uh, particular, those uh, belo belonging to evolutionary younger uh, families called AGMT. We and other groups estimate that L1 that derived tra transcript uh, may co co constitute up uh, to five to 10% of the whole new neuronal tra 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 transcriptome, uh, included uh, ribosomal RNAs. A full length mouse uh, L1 is a six uh, kilobases long element uh, made up by a five prime OTR uh, containing a, pro a promoter co composed by a variable number of uh, uh, sim similar mor 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 monomers, each one containing re regulatory sequences such, such as a uh, CPG island and transcription factors binding sites. Two open reading frames encoding for proteins uh, called ORF1P and ORF2P that are important for a process called retrotransposition and via free prime OTR with regulatory functions. 
retro transposition, the hallmark of L1 transposable element is a copy and paste mechanism uh, in which a copy of line one RNA is reverse tra transcribed in the corresponding DNA sequence and integrated in a different po position in the genome, thus increasing the overall co co copy number of L1s in the DNA. A very crucial role in this process is played by R2P, a protein produced by L1s, which possess reverse transcriptase and endonuclease activities. Retrotransposition is thought to be a major driving force uh, for eukaryotic gen gen genomes evolution and uh, uh, a source uh, for genomic and, fun and, fu and functional diversity among and inside individuals, in particular in the brain. However, to be fair, it is not clear uh, what is the, biolo the, biolo the biological relevance and meaning of somatic variation for, new, for neuronal fun 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 functionality so far. What we know is that uh, Retrotransposition shapes size and functions of, of eukaryotic gene, 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 genomes with uh, line one sequences promoting, for instance, alter, alternative uh, splicing events, pre premature gene bre breaking by polyadenylation or exonization events. Re recently, novel fun functionalities of L1 as non coding RNAs have been reported. For instance, line, line 1s may provide alter alternative uh, transcription start sites for expression of, of neuronal genes during differentiation of human neural stem, stem cells, or may serve as uh, com structural components. Uh, at the boundaries of active and, and inactive chro chromatin co compartments in nucleolus associated and lamina so, asso, associated heterochromatin in uh, embryonic cells. Or their binding to pro, pro, proteins, in this case, CAP1 and, 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 and nucleolin, may regulate the expression of, ri of, ri of, ri of ribosomal genes in the early stages of embryonic development, thus uh, pro 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 promoting uh, a fast uh, cell proliferation. In the perspective of line, of line ones working as non-coding RNAs, we retrieve more than 500 uh, L1 sequences from the mouse G genome cho chosen from different uh, evolutionary time points. And in collaboration with Artalia's group in IIT, we try to predict their pro protein intera intera interactome using the CatRapid cat V2 omics tool which integrates different types of information, such as physical chem chemical pro pro properties, uh, prediction of the local secondary structures, and the presence of uh, known uh, RNA binding sites from uh, uh, Eclipse exper exper experiments. The output of this prediction is a list of more than 200 putative proteins, 45 of which are notated as RNA binding pro 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 proteins whose gene ontologies are highly re 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 related to uh, epi epi epigenetic and post transcriptional re regulation of gene expression in neurons. More, more, moreover, uh, while L1s are highly repressed uh, during development to avoid the mutagenic uh, effect delivered by re retrotransposition, tra we observe a reactivation of the younger fam fam families, A, G, and T, during the, uh, dev, 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 du during the development of the mouse brain, with two peaks of expression corresponding to the neurogenic phase in the em embryonic cor cortex and to activity of uh, mature ne neurons in the postnatal st stage. So the aim of this work was to understand the biological meaning of line one expression in the early and late stages of the development of the mouse brain cor cor cortex by knocking down L1 RNA levels with short type pin RNAs. 
for this purpose, we took advantage of the in utero ele 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 electroporation te technique to study the effect of L1 knockdown upon neuronal commitment in the early development of the mouse brain cortex and transduction uh, with adeno-associated virus viruses of pri primary new and new neurons to study the effect upon uh, neuronal mod mod maturation. Per, per, firstly, we studied the effect of, L, of L1 silencing in the developing mouse cor cortex by another ele 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 electroporation of uh, a short IRP RNA against L1s at E12.5 and checking for the effects at later time points. RNA seq performed on fax sorted ele electroporated cells confirmed the down regulation of many L1 subfamilies. Sub with an average efficiency of knockdown of 50 per, 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 per percent. And RNA-seq also revealed a huge effect of L1 silencing on the uh, cor 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 cortical de development with 3,500 genes upregulated and related to promotion of neuronal differentiation on one hand, and 2,700 genes downregulated and related to impaired mitotic and metabolic activities on the, on the other end. We confirmed these results by monostainings uh, because we observed a decreased number of radial glial cells marked by PAC6 and a higher number of neuronal committed cells marked by uh, NeuroD1, one day and two days after the injection. However, the ability of newborn neurons to migrate along the cortical plate was partially compromised with cells at, 18 point, at E18.5 more prone to accumulate in the lower layer of the cortex. Then we studied the effect of line one silencing on the moderation of cortical neurons. So uh, we isolated cor cortical cells from uh, embryonic mouse brain at E17.5. We infected cells with AAV expressing two different SHRNAs tar targeting uh, L1s called A and B. And we performed RNA-seq experiments after three weeks in culture. Also in this case, the RNA-seq confirmed the downregulation of the more ev evolutive younger L1 families with an average efficiency of knockdown of 40-50%. And the RNA-seq revealed a strong impact upon tra transcri transcriptional landscape with the upregulation of more than uh, 1,600 genes uh, related to post-transcriptional regulation of gene expression and RNA met metabolism and the downregulation of 1,400 genes related to neuronal maturation and synaptic activity, indicating that L1s play a role uh, in the correct maturation and functionalities of neurons. Interestingly, line one silencing affects the very same uh, pathways involved in the maturation of neurons, since, since the genes that are overexpressed during the physiological maturation of cells in cultures are, are the very same genes that are downregulated by L1 silencing and the other way around. L1 silencing also affects the cell type composition of cortical cultures. Uh, since we observe a decreased number of astrocytes marked by uh, GFAP and GABAergic inhibitor inter, inter, interneurons marked by GAD1 and 2, and an increase of immature ne neurons positive for, ne for uh, the marker neuroD2. Moreover, the uh, pharmacological inhibition of, re of, re of retrotransposition by lam lamivudin and zidovudin in, cal in, cal in cultured neurons altered only a small fra fractions a fraction of the genes dysregulated by L1 RNA de 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 depletion, only 17 genes out of more than 3,000. And this corroborates um, the hypothesis that uh, L1s act as non-coding RNA and in a retrotransposition in the independent manner. From the mechanistic point of view, we found with different and, in, and independent approaches that 
L ones exert a part of the fu functions interfering with polycom rep rep repressive complex two. PRC2 is a protein complex uh, responsible for the trim methylation of lysine 27 of histone H3, thus pro promoting close cro chromatin and, re and, and, re and repression of gene expression. For, for, uh, for, firstly, we found that PRC2 uh, sub subunits were among the most enriched transcription factors predicted to uh, regulate genes dysregulated by L1 silencing in our RNA-seq experiments, both in the developing cortex and in cultured neurons. In addition, the PRC2 components, SAS12 and ECDH2, were among the top protein interactors uh, by score, according to a cut, cut rapid pre pre prediction. So we validated these uh, interactions by demonstrating fir firstly that more than 90% of L1 uh, RNAs are associated to uh, chromatin in most new, new uh, neurons, and that they can bind SAS SAS12 and ZTH2 by RNA nat uh, immunoprecipitation in both native and cross-linking condition at the chromatin level. The binding of L1 RNAs to PRC2 means that L1s could have a role in the epigenetic reg 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 regulation of gene expression in the developing mouse cor cortex and in the maduration of cor cortical ne neurons, as also predicted by the protein inter interactors uh, of line 1 RNAs. To assess this point, we performed chip seek experiments to check for changes of deposition of its H2 and h 3 k 27 3 methyl on culture new and neurons. L1 silencing was responsible for an overall higher deposition of h 3 k 27 3 methyl on the TSS of genes downregulated according to uh, the RNA seq exper experiments. And these genes, almost 500, were highly enriched for um, uh, functions related to synaptic activity, uh, plasticity, poten potentiation, ion dynamics, and vesicular tra 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 transport, coherently with the glo global effect produced by L1 knockdown on the maduration of culture neurons. Meanwhile, and interestingly, we found a significant increase of its ZH2 deposition on 94 genes whose expression is, cru is, cru is, cru is crucial for pro proliferation, sulfate specification, and identity of different types of progenitor cells in the, in the mouse brain. Example of these genes are PAX3 and PAX6, SOX2 and SOX6, T TBR2, BMP4, BMP6, and many com components of the wind pathway. This suggests that the depletion of L1 RNAs um, may enhance the activity of PRC2 uh, on these genes, then uh, may lead to a higher repression of these genes with the effect uh, of promoting neuronal com commitment in line with what we observed in the in vivo experiments on the uh, early development of the mouse cortex. In conclusion, we found that L1s have a role as non-coding RNAs in the development of the mouse brain cortex. In this context, they reg regulate the balance between proliferation and differentiation of progenitor cells, sustaining proliferation on one hand and restraining the neuronal commitment on the other hand. They promote the correct transcriptional ca cascade le leading to differentiation and maturation, the expression of synaptic genes, and they ensure the correct reper repertoire of cell types and the migration ability of neurons. Mechanistically, line one RNAs exert a part of their effects interacting with PRC2 and inhibiting its activity at the level of genes important for maintaining uh, proli proliferation and, and identity of different types of neural progenitor cells. 
this interaction could be crucial to uh, slow down the uh, new the neuronal commi 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 commitment and maintain a pool of progenitor cells a long time allowing the correct timing of different of, of differentiation and cell type composition uh, of the brain cortex I would like to thank all the people of my lab, in particular Alessandro Simi and Pierre Lau, who worked on the in utero elect electrocorrhation experiment and sequencing data analysis. Our collaborator, Ale Alex Armaus and Giancaetano Tavartaglia in IIT, and Remo San 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 Sanchez at CISA in Trieste, and obviously my head. The head of, of my of my lab, Ste, 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 Stefano Gustincic, for this opportunity. Thank, thanks for the attention. I'd be glad to take all your all your questions. Okay, thank you, Damiano, for this uh, beautiful talk. Um, let me check if there are some questions in the Q and A. Um, I don't see any at the moment, so maybe I will start. Um, so I was wondering um, regarding the interaction of uh, line one with the PRC2 complex. Um, so it was predicted uh, by uh, the cat rapid, I guess. Um, have you checked the direct interaction, for example, uh, in an in vitro system or by uh, RIP and uh, in, in any other way in, in the cellular system as well? So the uh, interaction is, pre is predicted by cut rapid. Uh, there is also a, um, a very high and significant overlap with predicted G quad 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 quadruplex um, on uh, L1 six, six, six sequences. Uh, this is good because it is known that uh, PRC2 in, par in particular DTH2 can, can interact with uh, G quadruplex RNAs. And this interaction, according to the uh, studies of uh, Tom Cech, is has an inhibitory effect upon the binding of its DTH2 uh, on the DNA. Uh, we checked the interaction in uh, in, in vivo uh, on culture cells, on culture new ne neurons, uh, by uh, RNA monoprecipitations. Uh, so um, both for EZH2 and SAS12, and we did this type of experiments uh, both in nat in nat in native uh, co con 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 condition and in cross-linking. We uh, performed the RNA monoprecipitation uh, on the whole lysate uh, of uh, neuronal cells, but also um, um, in in the in the lysate enriched for chro chromatin. Uh, to be um, sure about uh, the the uh, where the interaction. Take 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 takes place. Uh, and so did you we, see any difference uh, between the chromatin enriched and the without the one without chromatin? Was the affinity higher? Or uh, we see the interaction in uh, both the cases. Uh, we didn't perform so so far any type of experiment. Uh, in in vitro system with purified proteins or with uh, syn synthesized um, pieces of, of L1 RNAs. So we cannot uh, quite answer to uh, many questions regarding the more mechanistic uh, uh, yeah, pre criticism. <laughs> okay, thank you, Damiano. In the meantime, there are two questions in the chat, so I'm going to read the first one um, from uh, Marco Mineo. So, uh, great talk. Is L1 RNA conserved in humans? How and does he have any role in cancer development? 
line one mobile elements are present in all eukaryotes uh, so they are present uh, of course in human uh, the human system is very di different from the mm, murine one uh, so for example uh, uh, i'm not sure that this type of interaction can uh, take place also in in the in the in the human cells we have, we have to check uh, about the uh, the uh, specific question about the role of L1 in cancer there are a lot of st studies uh, about the, mm, the 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 effect of retrotransposition in inducing mutations in uh, cancers mm -hmm. this is uh, this it was char characterized for many types of tumors uh, recently, uh, re recently uh, have been also reported um, uh, the first uh, evidence is about the, the, the effect of L1 as uh, RNAs in, ca in, ca in, ca in cancer, but there are, um, uh, there are different uh, results coming, coming out from the studies because according to uh, to some study, the uh, effect of the overexpression of line elements is prom is is pro to promote uh, the aggressiveness and proliferation of ca of ca cancer cells. But on the other end, the suppression of L1 expression uh, has been uh, um, uh, observed in. Uh, cancer cells of the niche of the tumor. Okay. So in uh, the type of cells that can be uh, addressed as uh, can cancer stem cells. Oh, very interesting. It seems quite a complex uh, scenario. There's a few more questions here. So I'm going to go on um, from uh, Li Xie. Uh, what regulates the expression and degradation of L1 during neurodevelopment? It has been suggested that MIUI is expressed in the brain. Are the L1s monitored by PIUI, by pi RNA pathway? <clears throat> uh, about the, uh, the regulation by the um, by pi RNAs, uh, this, uh, this crosstalk has been fully characterized in uh, in uh, in um, in ger in germ cells um, there are no many evidences uh, about this in the in um, uh, in the adult brain in new in neurons but uh, sure it's something that uh, it it is very interesting to 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 be addressed uh, about other other mechanisms that, that may control the the transcri transcription of L1s, uh, we know for sure. I didn't show in this presentation, but I have data, data, data about this. Is the uh, methylation of L1 promoters by the uh, DNA methyl tran transferases? So the in particular DNMT1. Uh, and the NMT3 A, A and B that are uh, actively expressed in uh, in adult in uh, in the uh, in the adult brain in in new in neurons. Uh, other factor that that may uh, contribute to the regulation of the stability of L1 RNAs are uh, the helicases uh, RNA helicases. Mob Mob10 is one of is one of is one of these for uh, for uh, for ex example. Thank you. Uh, there's a few more questions. Uh, there's one from Jenny Defors. Uh, thanks. Do you consider chirp DNA or RAP DNA techniques to detect long non-coding RNA chromatin binding events? What is the proof that your long non-coding RNA regulates its possible targets from RNA seq directly? Thanks. Uh, this is a very uh, complicated question uh, for the for, for the first part. Uh, what we are, what we plan to do in the future is to um, uh, perform a technique called radical seek, 
mm, radical seek has been uh, developed uh, by Carnegie's lab uh, at Riken Institute in Japan. And this technique allows to uh, detect the interaction between RNAs and DNA. Uh, so mm, they in, mm, they, they a overlap of the this type of uh, of uh, of data with the one coming from uh, for example uh, chip seek experiments could be uh, very interesting because it could <clears throat> uh, could help to have a big 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 picture of uh, where these type of RNAs are uh, positioned on uh, wh where they interact on, cro on, cro on chromatin and where and what type of re of relationship does exist with uh, with uh, with uh, transcription factors, for example, that may be involved in the re in the regulation of cro chromatin dynamics. In this case, in the in the development. Uh, in, in, in the de development of the of the of the of the brain and neuronal different different differentiation. Thank you, Damiano. There's uh, uh, another question in the chat, but I guess the time is over, so maybe you can answer it uh, directly on the chat. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so um, now we go on. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce the second speaker of today, Dr. Laura Broglia, uh, a postdoc in the laboratory of Gian Gaetano Tartaglia here at IFT. Uh, she got her PhD from the Max Planck Institute in Berlin, where she was part of the laboratory of uh, Dr. Sarpentier, where she studied post-transcription regulation mediated by ribonuclease in gram-positive bacteria. Laura won an AMBO postdoctoral fellowship that supported her uh, current work on the role of regulatory RNAs in neurodegeneration. And starting from this summer, she will also be a Marie Curie postdoctoral fellow. Okay, Laura, I guess you can go on and uh, share your slides. Hi, uh, thank you, Daphne, for your kind uh, introduction. Um, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Um, I'm happy to be here today to present my work on an RNA binding protein and its role in uh, uh, differentiation processes. Uh, we all know that uh, RBPs control every aspect of RNA metabolism from transcription until degradation and alteration of these steps are often associated with human diseases. Uh, in fact, uh, for instance, diseases of the nervous system are the top Mendelian disorders which are due to mutations in uh, um, RNA binding proteins. It is more recently that a role for RBPs in developmental processes have been uh, discovered. In particularly, uh, RBPs are highly expressed in embryonic stem cells and are highly regulated uh, in the exit from pluripotency, indicating that post-transcriptional regulation is a key um, has a key role in um, uh, controlling uh, these events. Uh, what are embryonic stem cells? These are cells which are isolated from the inner cell mass of blastocysts and have two uh, major characteristics. Uh, Self-renewal, meaning their ability to uh, replicate indefinitely while keeping the undifferentiated state, and pluripotency, the ability to give rise to all the uh, terminally differentiated cells. And for sure, they, uh, have, they are a powerful tool to uh, understand the early uh, stages of mammalian development. Among all the RBPs which have been linked to uh, developmental processes, the most studied are the uh, signal transduction and activation of RNAs family. Uh, these proteins uh, contain a QA1 domain, which is important for homodimerization, a KH homology domain, which together with the QA2 form an extended RNA binding surface, and they often contain other domains, which are important for protein-protein interaction and uh, post-translational regulations, and this is how uh, these proteins uh, can link uh, cellular signaling with uh, post-transcriptional regulation of uh, gene expression. Uh, in this project, we are focusing on two of these members, which is which are uh, quaking and SAM68, corresponding to the uh, vertebrate homologs. SAM68 is a mainly nuclear protein, and uh, its role in uh, post-transcriptional regulation and development have been uh, quite uh, studied um, 
quite deeply. And for instance, it's involved in spermatogenesis by controlling uh, the translation of some key factors. Uh, quaking, uh, it, it's produced um, as different isoforms, which could be either uh, cytoplasmic or nuclear, and its role in uh, um, the nervous system development has been quite uh, well described. And more recently, it's known that if it's implicated in the cardiomyocyte differentiation. So it's quite clear that these RNA binding proteins are involved in tissue specifications by modulating RNA metabolism. However, uh, it's not very clear uh, what's their impact in early development. And this brings me to the aim of this project, which is to understand the impact of some 68 and quaking in early development, and in particular, understanding their role in uh, cardiogenesis. To answer these questions, we are using an experimental model consisting in uh, mouse embryonic stem cells, which were engineered using CRISPR-Cas9 in order to generate uh, some 68 and quake knockout. Uh, these cells were grown using the hanging drop technique. Um, basically, the cells were led to grow uh, um, and differentiate spontaneously into uh, spheroid-like um, three-dimensional structures called embryonic bodies for 10 days. Um, cells were harvested at three different time points during differentiation uh, uh, and used to perform phenotypic characterization and omic analysis. Uh, so um, the mutant generation was done using single guide RNAs, which targeted the first exon of the genes. And this is how we achieved a complete abrogation of uh, the um, protein expression. Uh, first of all, to understand the role of these two proteins in uh, uh, mouse embryonic stem cell self-renewal, we perform a proliferation assay um, uh, in which that consist in uh, um, synchronizing the different cell lines and monitor the growth over time. What we observed was a decrease in the proliferation rate in the two knockout cell lines compared to the wild type. Um, this is quite consistent with the clonogenic assay in which we observe a decrease in the size and number of colonies in the two knockout cell lines compared to the wild type, suggesting a role for some 68 and quaking uh, in uh, self-renewal and proliferation of mouse embryonic stem cells. To understand the impact of the two proteins into cardiomyocyte differentiation, we, uh, I mean, at day three uh, of uh, um, hanging drop uh, differentiation, the embryonic bodies were singularly placed in a uh, well of a 96 well plate and led to a deer. In this way, the cells will spontaneously differentiate into the cardiomyocyte lineage and generate a beating foci. Uh, we uh, measured the number of beating foci, and what we observed was a decrease in the number of foci in, uh, some, um, in the quaking and some 68. For quaking, this effect was already known, but for some 68, this phenotype was never um, described. Uh, in addition, not only the uh, number of fossa, beating foci was reduced, but we also observed that in the absence of some 68, the beating was altered. In particular, it, it was uh, the beating was faster compared to the wild type cell line. So since this uh, phenotype was new for some 68 knockout, we decided to give more insight into its role in post transcriptional regulation and differentiation. And this is why we performed, uh, first of all, uh, we decided to identify the interactors of this protein uh, during differentiation. Uh, and to do so, we uh, took advantage of a knock-in cell line in which some 68 was fused to GFP. Um, the interactors were identified by performing uh, some 68 pull down using GFP traps, and the interactors identified by mass spectrometry. Uh, these volcano plots uh, depict the number of interactors uh, over time. And what you can observe is that the number of interactors increase over time. And uh, this might suggest that the function of some 68 during the, do, uh, and of its interactors during development is quite important. Um, the overlap of the interactors among the different time points was relatively small, suggesting the interactome is 
dynamically regulated, and not surprisingly, we observe uh, uh, members involved in RNA metabolism. For instance, the uh, macroRNA machinery, uh, readers of M6A uh, modification, and uh, we were interested in the interaction with IF2, IF3, which have been shown to be involved in sick RNA biogenesis and also to be involved in uh, pluripotency and differentiation. Uh, this is why we uh, confirmed the interaction using uh, EF3 uh, pull down, and we observed the detection of some 68 only in the presence of RNA, suggesting that the interaction between these two proteins is mediated by uh, RNAs. Uh, so what do we know about uh, star proteins and circ RNA biogenesis? For quaking, it was already known that uh, it was involved in uh, uh, promoting circ RNA's uh, production by binding to uh, motif into entronic regions and uh, by bringing the backsplice sites close to each other. Uh, regarding uh, some 68 uh, only recently a role for some 68 in circ biogenesis have been reported in particular this protein seems to cooperate together with allo sequences to promote uh, uh, rna circularization so the next question was to understand uh, what these two proteins are doing at post transcriptional level uh, during differentiation with a particular focus on circ rna biogenesis this is why we performed rna sequencing at three different time points um, these box plots represent the impact at post transcriptional level of quaking and some 68 knockout. And what you can observe is that some 68 knockout has a, a bigger impact compared to quaking in gene expression, with a predominant effect in uh, gene deregulation. Um, Surprisingly, when we uh, look at the overlap between the two uh, knockouts, we observe that overlap is uh, quite limited, suggesting that the two proteins are um, acting in different uh, regulatory pathways. Not only the overlap is small, but when we focus into the, uh, on the common uh, regulated genes, we can see that the, the, um, the, the common regulated genes are actually regulated in an opposite manner. And the, as you can see from the graph on the top, and the, the number of genes that are regulated in an opposite manner increase during differentiation, suggesting that this protein have a, a diverg divergent role during um, differentiation. We then perform a gene ontology analysis, taking into account genes which were differentially expressed at day 10, and we took into consideration all the RNAs which are involved in cardiac and muscle development and function. And what we observe is that while these RNAs are up-regulated in some six-state knockout, the pattern was completely the opposite in the quaking knockout. Uh, among the genes which were uh, regulated in an opposite manner uh, by some 6 8 and quaking, we found uh, GATA4. Uh, we are interested in this protein because it's a master uh, transcription factor which is involved in uh, cardiac development. Um, what we observed was that while the messenger RNA was upregulated uh, in the absence of some 68, the protein levels were actually downregulated. And this was also confirmed by Western blot and also by immunofluorescent. So uh, this suggests that some 68 is somehow required for the translation of this messenger RNA. Therefore, to assess the impact of some 68 mutant on translation, we perform riboseq analysis. Uh, riboseq is a technique which uh, provides a snapshot of all the actively translated messenger RNAs. And here, what we did was to combine the uh, riboseq analysis with the data from the RNA-seq. And what we uh, observe is that GATA4 uh, indeed belonged to the category of genes uh, of mRNAs, which were uh, less associated to ribosomes, therefore less translated uh, in the absence of some 68, suggesting again that this RNA binding protein is somehow involved in the translation of GATA4 messenger RNA. So as a uh, further analysis, as we know that these two RNA binding proteins are involved in uh, uh, splicing, we uh, measured all the uh, defect um, as alternative splicing events. And what we observe is that uh, although the number of events was quite high, the overlap again between the two uh, knockout cell lines was quite small. In fact, uh, while the altered events in quaking knockout uh, 
belong to the category of exon skipping, the majority of the altered events in some 68 uh, mutants belong to the um, category of intron retention, suggesting that they are regulating uh, alternative splicing in uh, a different manner. Uh, so, in light of the fact that some 68 interacts with a, interacts with a complex which is involved in uh, um, circa RNA biogenesis, and in light of its involvement in uh, alternative splicing, we then interrogated our RNA seq data to understand whether these proteins have a role, in particular some 68, in circa RNA biogenesis. So. Here we can see that uh, uh, quaking knockout has a limited impact on sick RNA biogenesis at the three different time points. But when we look at some six state knockout, we observe a measured impact on the number of uh, sick RNA that were produced suggesting that SAM68 is an important uh, uh, protein involved in uh, sick RNA biogenesis. So we next consider all the sick RNAs which were produced by some 68, and we merged them with the ones known from the literature to be highly expressed in cardiomyocytes. And we observe a, a high overlap, uh, indicating that some, some 68 is involved in the production of sick RNAs, which are, which are cardiac uh, related. So, I showed you that from one side, some 68 uh, is required for the translation of GATA4 mRNA, and from the other side, some 68 uh, is a key player in uh, uh, sick RNA production. From here, the hy hypothesis that the regulation of GATA4 uh, mediated by some 68 is taking place through a sick RNA. So it's known that sick RNAs can control uh, positively the translation of their targets. For instance, in this example, uh, this sick RNA, by interacting with the three UTR of its target, promotes the recruitment and the loading of an RNA binding protein to, to the messenger RNA and uh, promoting stabilization and in turn increased translation. More recently, it has been described a um, novel method by which sick RNAs can promote uh, uh, the target mRNA translation. Uh, sick RNA, by in, uh, interacting with both five and three UTRs of the target mRNA, can recruit the uh, translation machinery through the internal ribosome entry site and uh, promote uh, directly mRNA translation. We focus on the second scenario, since in our condition we have a um, decrease, uh, we have a upregulation of some of GATA4 mRNA in the absence of some 68, so in the absence of the putative circa RNA. So the first question was to uh, check whether there are sick RNAs which are produced by some 68 that are able to interact with GATA4 UTRs. So what we did was to uh, perform a pairwise uh, uh, alignment um, comparing sick farsa, uh, comparing uh, the UTRs of GATA4 mRNA with all the sick RNA. So in this plot, uh, if a sick RNA is located in the top uh, right, it means that they, it has a high propensity to interact. Here I highlight uh, the uh, sick RNA, this is the first candidate that we are um, investigating, which is called sick farsa. When we use sick farsa and look for complementarity towards all the UTROM, we found that uh, GATA4 is ranking quite high, suggesting that he has a high probability to interact with sick uh, The prediction consists in nine nucleotide full complementarity in the five prime UTR and 11 nucleotides full complementarity uh, in the three UTR. We then uh, try to validate this interaction uh, in a simplified cellular model using bioatylated probes, uh, which interact with the backsplice junction. In this way, we are considering only the circular RNA and not the linear counterpart. So um, here we uh, perform a, a sick farsa pull down, uh, uh, looking specifically at the endogenous sick RNA. And we can see that we have a specific enrichment of sick farsa uh, in the presence of the uh, specific probes when compared to the condition uh, in which no probes were used. Importantly, we observe that also GATA4 is uh, specifically enriched. As negative controls, we use two messenger RNAs, which according to our predictions, have a low propensity uh, to interact with sick farsa. 
We then decided to uh, prove this interaction also using an overexpression system. First, we uh, took advantage of a plasmid, a secularizing plasmid, and we verified the levels of overexpression. And next, we also made sure that uh, um, upper, um, overexpression of the circ RNA uh, did not change the levels of GATA4 and of the two negative controls. Uh, so in the condition of overexpression, we achieved a high uh, enrichment of uh, the circular RNA and importantly also GATA4, suggesting uh, uh, that the two molecules are indeed interacting uh, in the cell. The next question uh, was to whether the circular RNA indeed contains an iris. And to answer to these questions, we use a bisistronic system in which the sequence under study is placed under two cistrons. Only if the sequence uh, is indeed an iris, we will have translation of the second cistron, which in this case, it's Firefly. Uh, we use the iris of CIMIC as a positive control, and we tested the sequence uh, corresponding to Circ Farsa. Uh, as expecting, we, obs uh, we observe that uh, the iris of CIMIC is able to induce Firefly translation, as well as the sequence corresponding to FARSA. Next, we perform truncation of the sequence corresponding to FARSA and included a negative control, which is uh, basically a sequence that should not act as an iris, but have the same length of FARSA sequence. What we observed is that the truncations uh, reduce the ability of uh, the sequence to promote translation, probably because uh, some RNA structures are perturbated. Um, the negative control uh, was not able to uh, enhance Firefly translation. So uh, this system has some intrinsic limitations uh, uh, due to the possible presence of cryptic promoters and unpredicting splicing events, which might produce a barren transcript that at the end will be uh, contributing to the total yield of Firefly uh, signal. That's why we repeated the, the experiment using a promoterless uh, plasmid system and by transfecting the uh, in vitro transcribed by cistronic RNA. So in the first case, uh, what we did was to compare the signal of luminescence in the presence and absence of promoter. Uh, as you can see here, we have a significant reduction of the luminescence signal in the absence of the promoter, suggesting no significant uh, presence of, promo of cryptic promoter activity. Of course, if we now take into account only the signal coming from the uh, experiment with the promoter, we confirm the original uh, founding where both sequences tested have the ability to promote Firefly translation compared to the negative control, which is uh, the empty plasmid, meaning in the absence of the iris. Um, next, to avoid or to exclude um, uh, unpredicted splicing events, we also transfected the in vitro transcribed RNAs with and without the iris. And again, here we uh, confirm the, uh, the, the ability of the FARSA sequence to be like having an iris-like activity. We then uh, confirm this funding by exploiting another system, a system in which GFP ORF is split by the putative virus and surrounded by uh, um, intron sequences, which promotes circularization. Only if the sequence cloned between the GFP ORFs access an iris, we will have translation of the circular GFP in a cap independent manner. We uh, first tested the RNA levels of the three constructs, meaning the negative uh, uh, sample in which we don't have iris inserted, the one used the, with the positive control having the simic iris, and the one with the FARSA sequence. We then used uh, flow cytometry to measure the uh, number of GFP positive cells um, and Thanks to the flow cytometry, we could observe indeed an increase in the HFP positive cells in the presence of the simic iris, as expected, but also uh, in the presence of the FARSA sequence, suggesting that the sequence was able to promote CAP independent translation. So, what's next? Uh, what we are working now is to understand where. Uh, how Sigfarsa is able to control the translation uh, of GATA4 mRNA 
In particular, from, on one side, we have tested the effect of sick farsa overexpression on GATA4 protein levels. And here we observe a slight increase in the GATA4 levels. Uh, on the other side, we are trying to reconstruct the three element system in a simplified cellular model in which we knock down uh, some 68, uh, generating a reduction in GATA4 uh, protein levels. And what we will try to do is to uh, test whether overexpression of sick farsa is able to restore the levels of GATA4 protein. Um, with this, I would like to summarize the, uh, the measure findings in this talk. So what I told you is that some 68 and quaking are two RNA binding proteins, which are important in uh, early development of embryonic stem cells. They are both involved in cardiomyocyte differentiations, although they act in a, uh, sometimes in an opposite manner. Uh, some 68 seem to be a um, crucial factor in the production of circular RNAs and it control the translation of GATA4 mRNA, which is a key uh, master transcriptional regulator involved in cardiogenesis. And we are working now on the hypothesis that the regulation of some 68 uh, of GATA4 protein levels is actually happening through a, a circular RNA. And with this, I would like to thank uh, Elias and Giangatano Tartaglia for giving me the possibility of working on this uh, challenging project. Um, be, there are a lot of people behind this uh, work, and I would like to thank in particular Alessandro and Maria Carla, which were the former PhD students that did all the characterization of the um, some 68 and quaking knockout and omics analysis. Uh, current PhD student, Guy, which is working on the iris uh, characterization. Um, I would like to thank also the group from of Stefano Gustici, in particular Sabrina, for the help with the characterization of the CIRC sign-up. All the bioinformatics team of the Tartaglia group uh, for the omics analysis and a big thank to David Mariani for the um, troubleshooting and discussion and of course all the Tartaglia group and I'm happy now to take uh, any questions. Hi Laura, thank you very much for this uh, presentation, a very uh, inspiring and indeed challenging project. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to check if there are some questions, not yet. So I'm going to start. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, one, which is a little bit maybe off topic, but I noticed when uh, you presented your MASPEC results with a SAM 68GFP, uh, 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 you had also um, proteins involved in the microRNA machinery and M6A readers, uh, but then uh, you chose to focus on the biogenesis on those related to uh, circular RNA. Um, do you think, uh, are you planning actually to uh, also uh, take a look uh, about the involvement of SAM68 within the context of these other pathways or uh, for now it's... Uh, yeah, actually, I have to say that too. I highlighted uh, the microRNA machinery and the M6A readers because they are actually also involved in circ RNA. So okay. it was for us a way to um, what guided us to choose actually to focus on circ RNA. But okay. surely it will be interesting to also find um, other ways on how some 68 will be impacting post transcription regulation. Uh, I mean, there are other examples which I didn't mention, but it's known that some 68 can recruit a uh, translation factor and promote the translation of the target. It's involved in alternative splicing. So of, surely there are other ways. Um, it's just that in this specific case, we were surprised by the amount of synchronous which were uh, downregulated in the absence of some 68. And this is a bit why you know, we chose to follow this uh, path. Yeah, okay, that's clear. And um, one more question. Um, actually, I'm uh, kind of um, intrigued by the fact that, uh, you know, you chose the CIRC uh, FASTA and, you know, that's the one that's actually interacting with the GATA4. So uh, except for being one of the most uh, upregulated upon uh, the knockout of some 68 where you... Um, uh, how did you really choose that uh, circular RNA? And are there more that uh, are predicted to bind to GATA4 or to other uh, proteins? Um... Yeah, so this is a good point. Um, yes, indeed, 
well, first of all, we did a screening on the interaction. Okay. And we were quite stringent because we uh, searched for food complementarity. So, uh, okay. Okay. and uh, we chose sick RNAs, which were down-regulated in some sick state knockout, and that were also reported to be cardiac related. So this shrink our original list. And second point, which I didn't mention before, but uh, of course we checked before also for the uh, putative iris. Okay. So okay, we used also online databases and tools to um, to check whether um, there was actually an iris predicted. And uh, the first That's experiment strange, actually, right? yes, and the first iris. Uh, experiments that we performed, actually we included others, uh, sick RNAs, which I didn't present here, but uh, we excluded some because uh, in our bisistronic system, they were not uh, giving us um, the iris activity. So this is how also we screened. Um, yeah, but possibly, yes, there are others that might interact um, with the, the UTRs, yeah. Thank you. I see we have a couple more minutes and there's uh, some questions. So I'm going to read them. Um, so the first one from uh, Evgeny Defors. Uh, so thanks. Direct <clears throat> circular RNA mRNA interaction is crucial for your mechanism. Do you have an in vivo proof of that direct interaction? If not, there are few RNA RNA interactome techniques like uh, LIGRC, COSPLASH, and PARIS. SPLASH works fine in my experience. <laughs> I guess. Yes. That. So, um, yes, if this is crucial for the, uh, we expect to be crucial. Uh, and what we will try to do to prove it is to perform mutagenesis of the predicted binding site. And this is the way we will uh, likely prove that uh, this is how the mechanism is involved. And yes, it would be uh, interesting to find the all interactome possibly, or to find it in a more omic uh, manner. For sure, we will work more on this, yes. Very yeah. last one from uh, Davide De Pietri Tonelli. Hi, Laura, congrats. Uh, in some models, SAM68 was shown to interact with Russia. Did you check uh, microRNAs? Uh, no, we did not check migraines. Um, so yes, it's known to be interacting, but uh, we don't really know at the levels of mouse embryonic stem cells what, uh, what's the functional consequence of this interaction. But yes, uh, surely uh, this is important. And uh, it's known that microRNAs are involved uh, in uh, adjusting the levels of uh, key proteins during development. Um, for instance, there are uh, uh, the same as circ RNAs. But um, yeah, we will look into this more in detail. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Actually, thanks to both the speakers. Um, and I just want to finish by reminding you that the next RNA Collaborative Seminar is on July 5th, hosted by the Institute of Molecular Biology in Mainz, Germany. Thank you, every, everyone, again, and see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>